Hello, welcome to the Enchanted Kingdom of Hermione, once again. I'm the Lord Chamberlain of the Enchanted Kingdom, and your host for today, Zip Gun. And uh, today on I Am That Sucker, I got one I've, I've never thought of doing it, and then I thought, well, wait a minute. So, I figured I would pull out one that I bought a long time ago, and I paid a lot of money for it, and it was this. It was... Ordit Coleman's Beauty is a Rare Thing, the box set of the Atlantic Years. And um, look at that groovy spine. Isn't that groovy? Now, this came out a while back, I think in the 90s. Rhino Atlantic Jazz. And this is, if you are into Ornette Coleman, much, if at all, You'll be interested in his Atlantic years. Certainly you will have almost certainly heard the album Free Jazz, which I still maintain is not the place to start with this guy. But there, this is his classic uh, quartet with himself, Don Cherry on pocket trumpet, Charlie Hayden on bass, except for a little bit of this where Scott LaFaro took over just before his untimely death. And it has free jazz, which is sort of a double quartet. Freddie Hubbard's on it, I forget who else. Ed Blackwell and or Billy Higgins on drums. And there's a bunch of extra stuff here, which is all of which is fantastic. Suffice to say, this contains all of the albums that were released back when he signed with these guys. I think it was 1961. Nisui Erdogan, once again, was the brains behind all this. He's the guy that signed Ornette and Charlie Mingus and a million different jazz artists, Kerry Burton, and uh, basically just set him loose in the studio, told him, do whatever you want. And this whole box was probably recorded over the space of about two and a half years. And it's a great, now this is old school. This is the 90s, 93, I think. And it was it's six CDs with a booklet. It was $130, a lot of money. Now, is it worth it? Absolutely, At every cent of this. Now, the good news is, for all the hipsters out there that have only recently discovered this great man, um, oops, my booklet's gonna separate though. Um, it's now available for about 60 bucks. They reissued it. I don't know if it still has the book, I suppose you could live without it. Um, but yeah, 1960, okay. Uh, does it have... It, I do believe it has all the session information somewhere in here, which is nice when you get a box set like this. Yeah, so it looks like the... Yeah, 61 looks like the latest. Is it really? No, can't it be? January 61. So they did all of this over the course of about a year and a bit. Now, not only do you have all the classic albums, oh, and I don't know about you, I keep my concert tickets in places like this. This is when uh, my good buddy Tom Holliston bought me a ticket for Ornette at the Chan Center, which was terrific. Last time I had any kind of a chance to see him live. Um, this contains the albums, um, oh boy, Change of change of the century? I should know all this, but it's hard to keep track of. Since I bought this box set, I don't think in terms of the albums anymore. I think in terms of the, the just sort of this box. The Shape of Jazz to Come, sorry. Change of the Century, yes. This is our music. Now, This is Our Music was a great record. There are very many bonus tracks from this album. And this session, there seems to be one, two, three, four, five, six songs that were extra. And one of them, a song called, I Heard It Over the Radio. I don't know if it's on YouTube. Go, It's one of the great Hor Ornette melodies. It's a wonderful, beautiful little melodic song. I whistle it all the time. So that's This Is Our Music. There's free jazz, of course. Um... There's the album Ornette. All of the titles are W R U T N T C and D R P D D. That's the album with Scott LaFaro on it. Because if I remember correctly, Charlie Hayden was having some serious personal issues at the time. 
Ornit on tenor, which now this may have been with Jimmy Garrison. Can't remember. Art of the Improvisers, which was sort of a um, leftovers album, came out in 1970. Twins, another leftover album, 1971. That one was pretty hard to find. Uh, it kind of just sort of snuck out there. And then to Wh to whom who keeps a record which is a Japanese-only release, 1975, of yet more outtakes from these sessions. And um, cleverly, I don't know whose idea this was, if you read the album titles in sequence, it says, Music Always, that's the first track, Brings Goodness, second track, To Us, third track, All, fourth track, P.S., Unless One Has, next track, Some Other, last track, Motive for Its Use. Oh, you clever, clever man. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, there's the, the, the sort of sessionography, if you will. And I like having a sessionography. This also contains um, music from... Uh, what was the album? I'm trying to find it here. Um, the Third Stream record that... Um, oh, it's here somewhere, I know. Here we go. From John Lewis presents contemporary music, jazz abstractions, compositions by Gunther Schuller and Jim Hall. And he that's on here. There's two extended tracks from that. Ornette Coleman, Eric Dolphy, Eddie Costa, Jim Hall, George DeVivier, and Scott LaFaro. Ooh, this is really cool stuff. It's hard to find. It's a little dense. If your Ornette tastes, you know, if you like Skies of America, you'll love this. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. It's a great little package. It's sort of easy to get at the stuff. There used to be a ribbon in here somewhere. Where did it go? The ribbon helped you get things out. There it is. Okay. So if I remember right. Oh, these, these ribbon things. Yeah, you put it like that. And then, then put your stuff in. Great picture of Ornette. Yeah! Oh. Um, this is essentially, if you're in, even remotely into free jazz, this is seminal. You have to have it. There's no... Oh, ribbon disappeared. Um, 60 bucks, you know, you'll spend that on a Friday night at the pub. Um, Not a lot else to say about this. You get everything he did for Atlantic. It was short and it was sweet and it was intense. And after this, um, he kind of, well, basically he tripled his fee is what he did. And he kind of disappeared for a couple of years because nobody would book him. They're like, what are you, nuts? But Ornette always marched to his own drummer. And ultimately it helped make him a little bit less available, a little bit more people wanted him more. He went to England, made a big deal over there. That was quite interesting. And after kind of an interesting... After this, he, his son, at 10 years old, joined his trio. Charlie Hayden came back, revitalized, and uh, Ornette and Charlie, and his son, Donardo, did a trio. He took a trio, a very interesting trio, with uh, Charles Moffat and uh, Isenson. What's his name? Isenson. And they did the. They played in Europe. They played in Sweden. All of these were really interesting. But this was the meat of his early career, and still remains probably the thing he'll be remembered for the most. Uh, when it's all, when the dust is all settled, uh, there's a lot of lot of facets to his career. But should you want to get into this guy, if you like what you've heard around the edges, this is a great. You, know, you can't go wrong with this. So. There you go. An A plus, I would give it, if I were Robert Christigal. Anyway, that's it for me. For the time being, it was a short one. Titanic hasn't even sunk yet. I was kind of hoping to watch it belly up, but I guess not. And uh, we're going to go dig. We're, but there's lots of other things I can I can uh, talk about of this nature. So we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the, the notification button. And um, watch for more crazy stuff. Thanks.